Hello. Um, so we'll speak about, um, talk about uh, the Ethernet link. Um, so from the Mac to the link partner, and we will see what is, uh, what do we call an Ethernet link? Uh, what can you find in it? And well, you'll see various, uh, various related topics uh, about it. Uh, but first of all, we will uh, give a first quick introduction about ourselves. Um, so my name is Antoine. I work at Bootlin. Uh, it's a French company specialized in um, embedded Linux uh, topics, and we are doing consulting and trainings. Um, as part of it, um, uh, I had the chance to work on many networking topics, uh, such as uh, Mac driver, Fi driver, or switches uh, as well. And today, I'm with my colleague. Hi, so I'm Maxime Chevalier. Uh, I work on similar topics at Bootlin. And so today, uh, oh, thanks. We are going to uh, introduce you to the first two uh, layers of the network stack. Uh, so, we are going to introduce the technologies and protocols that are used to connect, to, to connect the Mac to a Fi and the Fi to the link partner and see how this interfaces with Linux. So, um, Ethernet has been here for more than 30 years now, so it has evolved and is now a very complex set of specifications. So, um, we will take some shortcuts at some times so, so that we make this a bit more understandable. Yes, we could speak for, for a day about it, so we'll try to. <laughs> um, so we'll begin with uh, an introduction to the Ethernet link layer to first get a definition of what do we call the Ethernet link layer, uh, what uh, this link layer will solve, um, what, what problem uh, will it solve, and what it will look like. Um, so to begin with, we need a quick reminder about the OZ model. Um, so do you know the OZ model? Yes, probably lots of you. Um, so if we have a look at the OZ model, which, tries, which describes uh, the networking stack, uh, you can see um, many levels, uh, many independent levels, and the first one would be the physical layer. Um, so the physical layer will be responsible of transmitting um, digital data, um, well, um, converting digital data into a signal, and to uh, transmit this signal uh, over a medium, so that two devices can be connected together and can talk together. Um, so the physical layer will be really dependent uh, on a given medium, um, because you can have many different mediums used uh, as a physical medium, such as, um, uh, well, electrical ones, uh, radio ones, optical ones, um, so we'll see a few of them. On top of it, um, you have the data link layer, um, such as Ethernet. So we will speak about um, the data link layer uh, in case of Ethernet during this talk. And the data link layer will be responsible of um, connecting two devices and transmitting data between these two devices. Um, it will transmit data using what we call a frame. Um, and this is important. This means uh, you will have um, data which, which will be structured um, with uh, the raw data and plus some information needed um, so that you can understand what is being transmitted. Then on top of it, um, you have the network layer such as IP. And this one is really important because if, you, if you're only using the data link layer, you can only connect two devices directly connected. Uh, but if you do want to connect more than two devices and to be able to send uh, well, one data from a given devices, to a very remote devices uh, hopping through routers, uh, you need this network layer. So the main idea with the network layer would be to be able to route um, the data uh, through many machines um, up to your destination. And in case of the networking layer, um, we will be using packets. Okay? So a packet will be um, uh, well, the data you, you, will, you will want to send, a chunk of data you want to send from one device to another one. On top of it, um, you've got another layer, which is uh, L4, and this layer will be the transport layer. Given the one you'll be using, um, so the two main um, examples would be TCP and UDP, you will add extra uh, capabilities, such as reliability, uh, ordering, flow control, so it really depends on the one you'll be using. So this will be on top of the network layer. Um, today, uh, while speaking about Ethernet, we will focus on the first two layers. So the physical layer 
and the data link layer. But we will not speak about any other layer of the OZ model. Okay? So the two lowest layer of this model. Um, so if we have a look um, at what uh, Nissan Lightning can look like, um, the idea is you want to send uh, data from a CPU to a link partner, which will be a remote device. Um, and to do this, uh, you will have a few, um, um, a few elements on this link which will handle different um, uh, things. First one would be the Mac. Uh, it's called the Media Access Control. And this one will be responsible of handling everything that's linked to the level two of the OZ model. Okay? So we saw the OZ model. Uh, the Mac would be um, used uh, to handle everything that is linked to the data link layer. So Ethernet. Then um, you will have the network fry, and the network fry will be used to convert uh, this digital signal into um, an electrical signal. Um, and the fry will be responsible of handling um, L1, so the first level of the OZ model. So you have a clear separation between um, L2 and L1 in the design of the Ethernet link. Okay? Um, one thing about the EFI is uh, it will usually be controlled through a bus, which is called an MDIO bus. Uh, on this scheme, it's directly connected to the Mac because this is something you can see in many cases, but it can be connected to something else. Okay? It does not have to be connected to the Mac itself. Um, one comment about it, um, this is the main um, uh, diagram about the Ethernet link layer, um, the Ethernet link, uh, but you can have a few other uh, construction of the Ethernet link and we will see a few of them. This is the simplest one and this is the one you need to learn about uh, to really understand what's going to happen, uh, but you can have a few modifications uh, within this link uh, to, uh, to handle more advanced cases, to, to handle specific cases, okay? but we will see a few examples. Um, so one, um, one, uh, we will see a few examples using one real device, um, which is called the Macchiato bin board. And this board is um, um, an ARM64 board, which is using an SOC from Marvel. And what's really interesting about it is uh, you can see many networking ports. So it has four network ports. Um, with three different link designs, so we will, we will be able to see uh, three examples of what can be uh, the Ethernet link, and you have six cages. Um, so it's quite uh, interesting. So this is a, a full diagram, but we will um, see each port individually. Um, the first one you will see would be uh, represented as uh, ETH2 in Linux and it can handle up to one gig links. And as you can see, this is exactly what we previously saw. Okay, so this is the simplest design of um, an Ethernet link. You've got um, the CPU, which is connected to the Mac. Um, the Mac will handle L2, and then um, you've got a Phi, which will handle uh, L1. And finally, uh, a connector, uh, an RG45 uh, connector. Okay, so it's quite common. Then um, you have uh, access to two ports, um, which are ETH0 and 1 in Linux, and they can handle up to 10 gig uh, connections. And what's really interesting about it is you have two connectors on the same port. So you can either use an RG45 connector or the SFP connector. And this means that at a time you can only use one of them because you only have one Mac um, connected to those ports, but um, depending on the one you'll be using, you will need to reconfigure the link. Okay? You cannot have the same configuration of the link depending on the one you'll be using. And this uh, begins to be uh, interesting. So you will need to be able to do dynamic reconfiguration of the link to reconfigure the Mac, to reconfigure the Sardas lines, and to reconfigure the file to allow to switch between the two usage. And the first port, uh, which is ETH3 ETH in Linux, uh, can handle up to 2.5 gigs, um, and it will be only connected to an SFP cage. And as you can see, there are no phi in it. Okay? So the Mac is directly connected to the SFP uh, cage. Okay? Um, so this means uh, if you do not have a phi, that you can have a direct Mac-to-Mac -Mac connection. Um, you can also have a file which would be 
plugged in at runtime within the SFP uh, connector. Okay, but we will see, we will see this. Um, within Linux, um, you will have different kinds of drivers depending on which hardware you, you will need to drive. Um, so the Ethernet Mac will be driven by an Ethernet driver, which can be found inside drivers net Ethernet. And the Ethernet Mac controller will be represented by a net device. So this is a Mac. We still need to have a driver for the Phi, which is the second um, element we will have inside the, the Ethernet link. And to drive the Phi, you will have a driver within uh, net Phi, drivers net Phi. And it will be represented uh, by a Phi device. So in our example of the Macatobin example, we have the Ethernet driver, which is within driver net Ethernet Marvel MVPP2. And then we do have two kinds of file within the board. And so we have a driver for uh, each one of those files, uh, one which is marvel.c and the other one marvel10gigs.c. In some cases, you can have a package which will um, have the Mac and the file directly inside within the same package. So if you do have this kind of configuration, uh, this means you will not be able to connect uh, whatever file you want uh, on this Mac. But you will need only a single driver, and this driver will be the Ethernet driver. Okay. Um, at runtime, you can ask those two drivers to report um, a few elements, uh, a few statistics, and you can also control what this uh, driver will do. The main tool used is ETH tool, and ETH tool will be used to um, select and to modify options within the Mac driver, within the Ethernet driver. Um, so everything that will be reported will be what the Mac is seeing, not the file. In cases you do have a package uh, which will contain both a Mac and a file, um, then this view will be reported by ETH tool. So it really depends on the hardware you will have. If you have a specific driver for the file and a specific one for the Mac, then ETH tool will give you information about the Mac. But if you do have the same driver for both of them, um, then it will report what uh, this package is seeing. Um, the second one would be MII tool, and this one is deprecated. Um, it was uh, replaced uh, in, well, a few, uh, in most parts by ETH tool, but it can still be used uh, to dump uh, the file status, to, to ask the file to, to give you the status. It's not working with every file, but it can be useful in, uh, in a few cases. So it's good to know it exists uh, if, you, if you do need to, to use it. Um, so we just saw what's going to be inside uh, our Ethernet link, and what will be the representation in Linux, um, how can you construct uh, one Ethernet uh, link. But then the next thing to do would be to understand how uh, the file can communicate with the link partner and how the Mac can communicate with the file. And to do this, um, we have access to uh, standards, which were standardized by uh, I3E. Um, and you have two kinds of standards. Uh, one would be the Media Independent Interface, MIA. Um, and this one is, um, will handle the Mac to file connection. Um, so the idea is to connect different kinds of Mac to different kinds of Phi. Um, and you can find a few standards such as um, SGMI. You probably heard of it at least once. Uh, and the second one will be a media dependent interface, the MDI. And this one is dependent um, on the physical medium you'll be using. And this will be the standard used by the Phi to communicate uh, to the link partner. Okay. Um, so it will connect your physical layer to the physical medium. So depending on the physical medium you'll be using, um, is it a copper cable, is it a fiber cable, um, then you'll be using different kinds of specification. Okay. Um, a few examples about it. Uh, you can have 1000 base T, for example, which is quite uh, well used. Um, it's really simple. Uh, you only have a few of them. Uh, it's easy to, 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 to recall, to remember. Uh, so we will um, have a look at each and every of them, uh, of course. Uh, so 10 base 2, 10 base 5. <laughs> no, I, I'm kidding. The important thing about it um, is to understand that 
uh, those standards will be directly linked to the kind of uh, medium you'll be using. And then we have a slide explaining the name of the standard, uh, which is well, quite useful to know. So you will have something of the form uh, speed, band, medium, encoding, and lane um, to have as a result um, standard, which could be the one we just saw, 1000 base T. And you need to know the meaning of each of those later and, and keywords within this name. Um, so the first one will be the speed. This is the band rate, uh, bandwidth at which um, you can send data or receive data to the link partner. Um, then the band. Uh, you can have baseband, broadband, passband. Um, the most common one is baseband. And I, I'm not an expert in, uh, in, in signal processing, so I cannot explain everything to you, but it, it's depending on um, how, how the device will understand uh, the frequencies sent uh, to, to it. Okay? So if it's a baseband, it should be close to zero, I guess, and passband in between two frequencies. Uh, then the medium, uh, which is um, important as well, and the medium would be the physical medium used by this protocol. So if you're using something over um, twisted pair copper cable, which is a classic um, RG45, it will be T. Okay? So this means in my example, uh, 1000 base T, uh, this is a protocol which will be used if you want to use one gigs link over RG45 RG uh, cables. Um, we, uh, you, you have many more examples, uh, such as a base C, uh, which would be a copper link, or H, a plastic fiber, and you have many, many of them. So, as you can see, each of them is specific to the medium you'll be using. Um, then the encoding. Um, so, the encoding used by the PCS, uh, but Maxim will speak about the PCS uh, a bit later, so you will see what the PCS uh, is responsible for. And finally, the number of lanes per link. Um, and for base T, so for RG45, it will be the number of twisted pairs used. Okay. Um, and using this, uh, you can construct um, the different, kind, uh, the different uh, specifications uh, name. The other thing about the link uh, would be um, um, the parameter of the link. And you have the speed, which we just saw. Um, so this will be the speed at which you will be able to send uh, data through the link. Um, it can be many things. Um, well, the common ones would be uh, 1 gigs, uh, 10 gigs, uh, 40 gigs. Then you've got a second um, characteristic, which would be the duplex. And this one is really important. Um, it can be either half duplex or full duplex. Um, half duplex means only one of the two devices communicating can send data at a time, and full duplex means you can send and receive data at the same time. So you need to make sure that the two devices communicating together will use the same duplex, uh, otherwise it cannot work. Um, and auto-negotiation. Um, is your link able to uh, perform auto-negotiation? And auto-negotiation will be used to exchange information about what a link would be capable of. And then, based on this uh, information, um, the links uh, will be able to select one common, uh, well, common parameters to be able to, to, to talk to, together. Um, so, different specifications will be uh, able to operate at the same speed using the same duplex, but you will have a working link if you use uh, only compatible MII and MDI protocols. Okay, so you need to make sure that the MII and MDI, so the protocol which will connect the MAC to the fee and the fee, uh, the phi to the link partner, will be compatible. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> so we just saw the introduction about what is uh, an Ethernet link, and we will see uh, now with Maxim uh, more advanced things about media interfaces. Thank you. So, to dig a bit deeper, let's see what's inside the PHY. So, this is a Mac to PHY connection, and inside the PHY, you typically find uh, three main components. The first one is the PCS, which interfaces with the Mac, and is, uh, is in charge of encoding and decoding the link between the Mac and the PHY, so that it can transmit it to the rest of the parts inside the PHY. 
Next, you have uh, the PMA, which is kind of a glue logic between the PCS that interfaces with the Mac and the PMD that interfaces with the link partner. The PMA is also responsible uh, for uh, collision detection, for example. And next, you have the PMD, which will modulate the signal uh, to send it on the, uh, on the physical medium. So the PCS is kind of the important part here because, um, we, as we will see later, um, what was only at the beginning some internal part of a file is starting to migrate uh, to the Mac. So let's first focus on the MDIO link. The MDIO link is the link that is used to uh, configure the file. So it's also called sometimes SMI. It's basically an I squared C bus. You have two lines, uh, clock and data. And uh, it allows to um, connect multiple files to the same Mac uh, using the same bus. So it is an addressable bus. You can connect up to 32 files on the same bus. Um, and you can, through this bus, access the files uh, registers. So inside each file, there are some registers that are standardized, uh, allowing to have some generic drivers. You also have vendor extensions. Um, the MDIO bus controller is sometimes part of the Mac. Sometimes it's an external, uh, external device well, within your SOC. And there are mainly two flavors of MDIO. You have the close 22, which is the kind of historic one, uh, which has only uh, five bit uh, register addresses. So most of the time you have to implement some kind of indirect access to access all the register set of your file. And you now have the clause 45, which allows to use 16-bit uh, register addresses. And that uh, also provide a way to, uh, to sort the register uh, addresses uh, between different devices of the file. So as I said, you have a PCS, a PMA, a PMD. Uh, using clause 45, you will be able to address specifically the PCS inside the file, for example. So that's the notion of devices inside the file. So here it is, uh, how it is installed in Linux. So as I said, uh, there are some generic register sets. So you can find generic helpers in device.c for clause 22 and c 45 for clause 45. Uh, each file has a unique identifier based on its model number and its vendor so that you can select the correct driver uh, to handle this particular file. And each file is described as a node of the MDIO bus. So in the device tree, here is a, a binding example. So all, all that you specify is basically if it speaks C45 or, or C22 and its address on the MDIO bus. So now let's, start, let's talk about the high-speed link, the MII link which is used to uh, transmit the, the packets from the Mac to the file, the frames. Um, this link is replicated each time you connect a file to a Mac, uh, contrary to MDIO. For example, the first kind of link, which is called simply MII, is uh, made up of 16 pins to connect the Mac to the file. So each time you connect a new file, you have to reroute 16 other pins. So there is a variant which is called RMII, which used a reduced number of pins. So RMII stands for reduced MII. Then you have the gigabit version. Since MII only does uh, 10 and 100 megabits per second, GMII is used to transmit a gigabit link. It has 24 pins. So of course there is a reduced version, which uses only 12 pins. And sometimes you can find a version called RGMII ID, which has some timing tweaks. It's not really important here. And finally, you have the XGMII link for transmitted 10 gigabits per second uh, data. It has 74 pins, so it's really not something that you can use to connect a Mac on a, to a file on a PCB. It's mostly used uh, for uh, on-package uh, Mac to file connections. So obviously, there is a problem. How do I connect a 10 gigabit file to a 10 gigabit Mac if I can't use this interface? So what has been done is that uh, some parts of the file, namely the PCS that is in charge of encoding and decoding this link, is used inside the Mac to serialize the connection. So it's not something that, is, uh, that was originally specified in the i3 standard, 
But since we used uh, already defined bricks from the standards, it's pretty easy to implement in new devices. So um, basically, you will serialize the link inside the Mac, send the serialized version, and deserialize it from the file, or simply handle it directly into the file as is. Uh, there is the reconciliation sublayer, which is some glue logic to implement that. But what's important here are the third lane uh, notion. So you will transmit your serialized link over uh, some, most of the time, differential pairs, allowing to have much higher clock rates and a better signal integrity. But also, uh, the encoding um, needs to be done in a way that you won't have your signal staying at the same level for too long. So most of the time, you use uh, something like 10 bits, 8 bits encoding, which is actually defined in the base X specification or 66-bit, uh, 64-bit encoding. So basically, what it means is that when you want to transmit 8 bits of real data, you do that in 10 bits on the MII link. So uh, for example, uh, SGMII link, which is a GMII serialized, uh, when you want to transmit a 1 gigabit per second connection, you actually clock your service lane at 1.25 gigabits per second to uh, deal with this encoding that enlarge your, your data. Sometimes the clock is inside the same lane as the data, so you have clock recovery inside the file, and sometimes it just simply transmits it on, in a parallel manner. And the service lanes are uh, sometimes also have a specific driver that is handled in the generic file subsystem. So some example of serialized uh, connections, so you have SGMII. SGMII is actually a de facto standard that was I think, um, designed by Cisco. It uses four differential pairs, uh, uses a basic PCS. Uh, there are some new flavors of this link, uh, some that can transmit 2.5 gigabits per second data, and also the QSGMII, which is basically aggregating four links together to create one 5 gigabits per second link. Then you have the ZOE, so it's called ZOE, but it's written XAUI, uh, which is a, a standard defined in the I3E specifications to serialize the XGMII connection. You transmit it over uh, four service lanes, so you have 16 pins to, to route, and you also have a reduced version uh, called RZOE, only two service lanes this time. And finally, you have a kind of a family I grouped together for XFI uh, and SFI and also 10G based KR, which are uh, families where you transmit this link over one single service lane that goes at 10 gigabits per second. So how do I represent my Mac to Fi connection and specifically this mode inside uh, in Linux? So uh, first, you only had an enumerator that would say, okay, I'm using SGMI or GMII or MII. So it's the file interface T. Nowadays, you have the filing framework that is designed to really uh, give a good representation of this link. Antoine will talk about it a bit later. And that's what the binding looks like. So basically, you only say that uh, your Ethernet port is connected to this file using this mode. So let's see a bit uh, what is inside a file driver. So a file driver is a, is a really simple thing. Um, as I said, most of the heavy lifting is done by the file framework, file lib framework, because of the standardized register sets. Uh, the file driver, all it does is uh, manage the auto negotiation parameters and uh, report the link status. So is the link up or down? Is there something plugged uh, on the port? So nowadays, you are starting to have more uh, complex features implemented inside the files. Uh, you have complex statistics reporting, uh, max sec offloading, and work online uh, configuration. So I talk about auto-negotiation. I'm going to talk about the auto-negotiation that happens when you want to connect two uh, devices using, using base T because base T, it's basically using the CAT5 or CAT6 cable with RG45 connector at each end. So this connector can be used to transmit from 10 megabits per second up to 10 gigabits per second. And both devices have to agree on which, which speed to use. So on this example, I have two devices, 
uh, one using 10 gigabits per one supporting up to 10 gigabits per second, and the other one up to 2.5 gigabits per second. So obviously, since both support uh, 2.5 gigs, they will agree to use this speed. The main issue here is that it's not that simple to uh, make the list of the supported speeds because you have to take into account what the file supports, but also what speed the Mac supports and how is it connected uh, from the Mac to the file. So all of this, all of this um, uh, link parameters uh, list building is done uh, in software by the FileLib framework. So basically you will end, uh, will do a logical end between what the Mac and what the file supports. Uh, on the Mac Yatobin, for example, using uh, this is the one gigabit per second link. Using ETH tool, you can see what your device uh, supports, what it advertises to the other file, and what your link partner advertises. And so in that case, everything supports uh, one gigabit on base T, so they agreed to use uh, one gigabit link. And now Antoine will talk about the new stuff <laughs> that we need New to stuff. <laughs> okay, um, so we just saw what, what was the Ethernet link, um, how it's configured, uh, what kind of protocols will be used uh, within uh, this link. Uh, but this interface evolved over time uh, to support new um, uh, well, needs. Um, so we will see what would be um, the current evolution of this link. Um, and we will start by uh, having a slide on what is an SFP module because it will be really important uh, when uh, understanding why this link will evolve. Um, so this SFP module will be a small form factor uh, pluggable transceiver. And it's basically a module uh, which you can plug within um, an SFP uh, cage. Um, and <laughs> this is uh, defined uh, by um, a specification, which means uh, it's quite well used uh, within network devices. Um, this um, SFP uh, interface will be able to support various uh, medias, uh, various um, kinds of uh, cables. So you can have copper cables, you can have fiber, um, you can have many things. And what's also interesting is uh, it's hot pluggable and it can embed a file. So within this SFP connector, you can have a file in it, uh, which means you can at one time add a new file within the Ethernet link. Um, one thing about it, um, it can be passive, uh, meaning um, that you uh, won't have a file to give you the link status. Uh, in this case, um, the Sardes driver will give you uh, the link status, okay? or the uh, SFP module itself. Um, so with um, these uh, SFP modules, the Ethernet link is no longer fixed uh, because you don't longer have uh, only one Mac connected to a single file connecting to um, a, well, a connector, uh, but you can have a pluggable file within the SFP modules, which means you will need to be able to dynamically reconfigure the link. Um, Second thing about it uh, is you can have, as Maxim said, with the PCS, some part of a file which can be embedded uh, inside the Mac itself, uh, allowing not to have a file uh, in it. So if you recall correctly, um, ETH3 on the Macato bin does not have a file by default. It only has a Mac and an SFP cage um, so that you can have a direct Mac to Mac connection. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, ETH0 on one uh, within the Macchiato bin. Um, so the first uh, diagram is uh, the one we, we previously saw. Uh, this is, uh, say, ETH0. So you've got the CPU, the Mac, uh, a Phi, and on this Phi can be connected uh, either on RG45 uh, uh, cable or an SFP connector. Depending on what you will connect onto this link, uh, you will have different configuration of the Ethernet link itself. So this means at runtime you will need to reconfigure it so that uh, it can look uh, like one of these three examples. The first one would be the uh, case where you connect something onto the RG45 connector. Um, so this is a simple uh, Ethernet link. We saw uh, already a lot of time with, uh, in these slides. 
Um, so you have the MAC, uh, the phi, this phi, uh, it's acting as a phi, and then the, li the link partner. But you can also connect uh, an SFP transceiver and the SFP connector. And in this case, the phi will act as a pass-through, so it will not act as a phi. Um, and you have two possible options. Uh, either you have a passive SFP transceiver with no, fee, no phi in it, so you have uh, what we call a direct Mac-to-Mac -Mac connection. But you can also connect an SFP transceiver which embed a phi, and in this case, you will have dynamically a phi which will be added to the Ethernet link. Okay? So depending on, on uh, the configuration you will have, you will need to reconfigure the link. Um, so this was an issue in Linux because you had no way to do it. Um, and as a solution, one framework called Filink, uh, Filink was added by uh, Russell King, and this Filink infrastructure aims at solving this issue. So Filink will represent the link itself. It will not represent the Mac uh, or the Fi, but it will represent the link itself. Um, so that you can have outpluggable phi uh, within SFP transceiver. Um, thanks to Feeling, you will be able to reconfigure the PCS within the Mac um, so that you can handle uh, well, different kinds of connections. And Feeling will act as a synchronization layer to make sure that the link will be configured in a way it will be working. Because um, as we just saw uh, within those examples, uh, you need to make sure that the Mac will be configured in a way um, that will be working with the Phi configured in a way it will be working uh, with um, every protocol used between the Mac and the Phi and the Phi and the link partner compatible. Okay. Um, so this is what Phi link will do. Um, thanks to a state machine, it will make sure everything is configured the right way so that it can work uh, within a given configuration. Um, so we, we have uh, an example uh, about what Feeling will do, uh, and Maxim will, will show you this example. <laughs> yes, to quickly explain what's happening. So basically, uh, this is the, in, in the init sequence. So your Mac is initialized uh, at boot. Uh, all the ports are down. Uh, the file instance is created, and uh, you create your network devices on a per port basis. When you uh, do an IP link set your port up, you will uh, start your uh, port inside the Mac. And uh, file link will try to connect to the file that is described in the device tree. So in the device tree binding that I explained previously, it's basically a default configuration that is described. The file is powered on using this defol default configuration. And uh, there is an internal state machine that is started. So here, the MIA interface is uh, configured to its default value. So in the device tree, we set it to be 10 g based KR. So if you remember, it's uh, using one single service lane to, um, to uh, transmit the link over some uh, traces on the PCB. The problem with that is that the Phi itself um, can only use its 10 gigabit uh, on base T connection uh, when it's connected to the Mac using 10 g -based KR. And what happens when you, we plug a simple one gigabit per second device on the other side is that you will have auto-negotiation happening between your Phi and the other Phi. They will both agree to use one gigabit on base T. And uh, at this speed, the Phi expects, ex expects the Mac to be configured using SGMII and not 10 g -based KR. And this is something that we couldn't do before, uh, before we had filing since, since the Mac to filing was fixed. So in that case, uh, the file uh, will notify that it has changed its speeds and its link parameters. Filing uh, will notice that and ask the Mac to reconfigure itself uh, using filing Mac config to, so that the Mac to file connection is reconfigured to use a compatible uh, Mac to file to the link partner uh, link connection. So that's why uh, file link is useful, because in some cases you do have to change the way you connect the Mac to your file. So basically, on your board, you have uh, the Mac and the file connected through Serdus lanes, and the Serdus driver is reconfigured. So obviously, the board has to be routed in the correct way. Uh, so that it can support all, all of these modes. So um, that's all. So 
as you saw, the Mac2 file to link partner is uh, very complex nowadays where you have to uh, have a very dynamic thing instead of what was previously a fixed link. Um, file can be unplugged with the SFP, which is also hard to handle with the previous uh, representations that we had. So um, I hope that you learned something. And now if you have any questions. Thank you. <laughs> and one thing we'd like to, to thank uh, Stefan, Andrew, and Quentin for reviewing the slides. Um, it was appreciated. <laughs> there are some questions over there. Yeah. Hi, um, I was just curious, you've got things like director attach SFP, where I presume maybe that cable would have a fire in it, but maybe it wouldn't. Um, is, is that correct, that, that that's kind of implementation defined? Yes, you, you can have direct attach SFP. Okay. Um, so we can also potentially now have a, an SFP module with a phi in, but also a phi behind the cage on the board. Is that correct as well? And would we now end up in a situation where the module is actually not necessarily compatible with the cage, which you can see from the outside? Uh, you, you are referring to the case where the, the phi is connected to the SFP cage and you plug a, uh, an SFP transceiver with a phi in it? Correct, yeah. Uh, but in that case, the phi simply acts as a pass-through uh, for the service lanes. Okay. So actually, you directly, your Mac is connecting to the SFP cage in that case. Okay, so if we flip it around then, sorry, a couple of questions. If we flip it around then, there's no phi on the board. It's just a, a Mac to the cage. Yep. Do we now need to have an SFP module with a, with a Mac in or some kind of Mac to Mac link? Um, not necessarily, no. You, okay. you simply transmit the service lanes as is uh, sure. to the other Mac. Great, thank you very much. In the case where you had an SFP and an RJ uh, link, you had two Ethernet interfaces. Why do I need two Ethernet interfaces? I can only plug in one link, so why do I need two IP interfaces? Well, you don't necessarily, necessarily need two. Uh, yeah, there's yeah, only one, but you, you're referring to the case where you have two connectors and the same link? Yes. Yes, um, so you have two connectors because you have two different kinds of connectors. One is RG45, the other one is SFP. But of course, you can only use one at a time. So if you plugged in uh, two, connect two, two uh, cables into those two connectors at the same time, uh, then you will probably have undefined behaviors. And what really will happen in our case would be the last one would be taken into account. But why do I need two IP interfaces? No, you, you don't. You don't need to. You, you, you only need one. It, it depending on how do you want to design the board. Um, yeah, I, I get the question. The answer is that uh, there is ETH zero and ETH one, but it's two ah. times. Uh, ah, okay, okay, okay. Two times the RG45 and the SFP cage. So yes, you yes. Have, you, you have really two in different interfaces on the board, right? I so you have two Macs, and they both have one RG5 connector and one. Yeah, yeah you, you can have a look here. So you, you have two times uh, this connection. Uh, SFP, RG45, SFP, RG45, and the phi. Okay? So w when we, we, we are showing this, it's only one of the two. Okay? But you don't have uh, ETH0, which would be this one, and ETH1, which would be this one. This is ETH0, both of them. Okay? Hi, can, uh, can you uh, say a few words about uh, jumbo frames and how they relate into uh, Mac and the Phi? Uh, it's not really the topic of, <laughs> of this talk. Uh, I only worked once with jumbo frames, so I don't really know what to tell you about it. Um, okay, thanks. Alex, over there. Hello, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I would like to, to know if uh, there is uh, uh, an interface for inspection of the 
traffic that happens uh, on the media independent interface or there is only control pass for that? Uh, to, uh, to monitor what is going on, that, that's it? Uh, yeah. Because as far as I understand, uh, with, uh, we, uh, Linux has... Uh, uh, Phi has exposure of control paths to Linux, and that's it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Through the registers. Yeah, but yeah. for the MIA, you don't really have anything to monitor this? Yeah, for I, example, don't, I don't think there is something to monitor it. For example, uh, the... Mm, uh, broken uh, the the link failure between f uh, collision something like that. Yeah, what so uh, probably you will have access to uh, debugging registers, uh, which can show you this kind of information. Uh, but within Linux, I don't know of any standard tool to do it. Uh, I see. So okay, thank you. No more questions. So it's lunchtime then. <laughs> <laughs>